this is how I made my bike generator. I bought an old bike from Facebook Marketplace and I removed the plastic housing from it. That revealed underneath a metal flywheel. Now in most exercise bikes there's normally some sort of restriction mechanism here, either a friction plate or a magnetic device and that allows you to cause a bit of resistance on the bike when you're using it. Well, I didn't need that so I removed all of that and the next job was to cut a groove into the otherwise flat flywheel face. So what I found was best was to use one of these, it's a tungsten carbide bit normally meant for milling metal and I just held it between some pliers and then I got one of the children to get on the bike and spin away and I just held this to the wheel and that carved out a little groove and then that allowed me to fit this foot pulley belt and then on the end of that I fitted a car alternator if I was doing this project again, I wouldn't use an alternator, I'd probably use a permanent magnet generator. That would be a bit more efficient, I'd get more out of it. But this is what I had, so this is what I used. Um, the only problem with an alternator is that you don't just turn it and power comes out. You've got to energise the coil first, so there's a certain way of wiring it. Basically, the big bolt is your positive, you wire your positive to that. The housing of the alternator is your negative. And then there's two wires which normally run up to your car control unit. Both of those, or one of those, has to be connected to the positive. That's so that when the alternator is going, it can uh, keep um, energising its own coil to generate the power. So then this cable runs up the bike, through a power meter, and then down through a switch, and then it can terminate at your battery, negative, positive, you can use crocodile clips or, or whatever to connect it. So the way it works is, you get your bike going, start pedalling, you get it up to speed, and then you switch it on with the switch. That will then excite the coil and the alternator will start working. And the great thing about an alternator is they usually have a voltage regulator built into them. This gives that a steady 14.4 volts, which is the ideal voltage for charging a 12 volt battery. Also, the alternator will regulate itself so that you can't overcharge one of these batteries.